Welcome into another edition of the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. Tom Leach, along with Jonathan Fowler, pinch hitting for Jim Goodman today. And Jim had, uh, maybe Jim's spending all his winnings. He had a really good Oaks Day here on the podcast for folks that listened. And uh, he was talking up firing line in the Derby. So hopefully uh, you were riding with Jim on, on Derby weekend and cashed in. I was actually, he, he was very high on him, so, and I kind of went against him stupidly, so I, I threw firing line <laughs> at the last chance, so I'm kind of kicking myself, but uh, we'll, we'll try to rebound this week. Yeah, and we'll be talking a lot about the uh, big day of racing at Pimlico next weekend here on the podcast, but today we have four stakes races from Belmont Park to talk about, and we'll start with the grade three Peter Pan, which gave us the Belmont winner last year in Tonalist. Uh, this year, the grade two Peter Pan, three-year-olds at a mile and an eighth at Belmont, goes early as the third race on the card because it's got a small field. And you got a horse who is one of the more impressive winners of the Keeneland meet for Todd Pletcher two weeks off that's coming out of Allowance Company into a grade two stake here. Uh, I think he's going to be pretty salty, but this is a nice bunch. Uh, who'd you like? Yeah, well, I actually am going going with Baffert. You know, he, 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 got, the, he got the win um, on Derby Day, and he's, he, he's just hot right now. And so I'm going with the number one Wolfman Rocket. Um, he, he started, you know, in two starts out in Santa Anita, finished second in both of those, and really didn't threaten the winner in either one of those races. But then, you know, on the same day of the Arkansas Derby with American Pharaoh winning impressively, Wolfman Rocket, that's where he broke his, his maiden in a, in a stakes race. And he did very nicely. He broke kind of slow, which, um, you know, he was able to sit off the early pace and then just was able to power through the stretch. Um, not really sure the pace scenario here. That's that's going to be the intriguing thing. I, I think the favorite two weeks off is probably going to go to the lead, but you just never know with these these shorter fields. Uh, but I think Wolfman Rocket breaks to the inside can can probably stay out of trouble, um, and then you're going to have to use that two weeks off. Uh, he won so impressively here at Keeneland, and then I'm going to use the long shot on the outside. Tiz Shady um, was a good second in the Gotham. Didn't fire much in the Wood Memorial. I think that inside position hurt him a lot. Um, he breaks from the outside today, so I think a clear run makes it easier for him. So for me, it's going to be the one four five in the Peter Pan. I took the four two weeks off. Um, so impressed with that win at Keeneland, and then uh, I think the horse that ran seventh in there came back to win on Derby Day. And Pletcher is is really good at picking these spots when he when he has a horse that that gets good, has a big allowance win to be aggressive with his stakes placement if the horse is doing well and that's what he's doing here off the allowance win into a grade two stake so i'm going to try two weeks off uh and use wolfman rocket underneath of him and also conquest curlinate uh for uh, mark cassie who ran big in the illinois derby uh, i think um that one's got a, a shot to be a factor in here but two weeks off the four is the pick four over the one three for me fourth race the grade two ruffian and you've got another impressive winner out of the Keeneland Spring Meet going here, Princess Violet. She won the grade one Madison. I don't see any reason why she can't come right back and win another one. She's won three of four at Belmont. And she makes her second start since going into the Linda Rice Barn. And she certainly ran big for her first time at Keeneland. So I'm going to use her. Uh, and I'm going to use her over the uh, McLaughlin-trained entry, which includes Via Strada, who was a, a very impressive allowance winner here in the Keeneland Spring Meet. And the two, Shea Jolie, could be interesting to to come running late from the inside and get a piece of this, but Princess Violet's my pick for the win in the Grade Two Ruffian, the five horse. Who do you like? I went back and forth between Princess Violet and Via Strada, and then after going back and looking at Via Strada's win at Keeneland, I was so impressed by that race. She just won so easily. Rajiv Raj was on aboard that day and really didn't ask her that much. I think maybe gave her a slight tap just to keep her keep her focused. She's a street cry filly, um, making her her fourth start, so she's only going to get better. And I think the distance um, is right up her alley, too. So that one-turn mile, I think, will will do very nicely for her. So I'm going to put her on top of Princess Violet. Also going to throw in the number two, House Rules. She's never won at Belmont, but she's been in some tough situations at Belmont. She had her maiden race um, going, I think, five and a half furlongs. Didn't factor in that day. And then her other two starts at Belmont have been in grade one grade one races. So, you know, backing off a little bit, I think house rules can probably make a little bit of some noise here. So I'm going to use the 1A on top with the 5 and 3 underneath. Seventh race, the grade three Bogay, Phillies and Mayors, four-year-olds and up on the turf at a mile and a 16th. I thought this was a really, really tough spot. Some improving uh, young horses. You got a, a proven graded stakes winner and discreet mark coming in off a layoff. Who'd you go with in the Bogay? I'm actually going to try to beat her with the number six, Testa Rossi. Chad Brown is on fire right now, did so well at Keeneland. 
Um, and he's doing pretty pretty good here at Belmont, too. Um, this horse last time finished kind of an even fourth in the Santa Ana Grade 2 event at Santa Anita. Um, and, you know, she's done well at this distance. She's three for four um, at this distance, and, you know, she's won her only start at Belmont. So I'm going to put Testa Rossi on, on top of Discreet Mark because, you know, she's, she's a grade one winning filly, so I, I just think maybe the little bit of a layoff, may, she may need this race. I'm also going to use the number two radiator and the three receptor in the mix as well. They both won their races here at Keeneland very nicely, and I think they're going to be closing from off the pace, but I think they might be just closing a little bit too late. So I'm going to use the six on top of the seven with the two, three. I am going with receptor the three. Started to go with the discreet mark because she, she loves Belmont and uh, is a very classy mayor. And uh, Radiator, uh, I thought, was one of the more impressive uh, allowance winners during the Keeneland meet for Mott uh, early on in the meet, and she, she seemed to win with a lot left. But this is a pretty uh, it's an aggressive move here. Jay Wonder for McGahee I took a long look at. I, I like that horse at Keeneland and uh, didn't run real, real well uh, there at Keeneland, just kind of okay, but I uh, think could really improve. But I came back to Recepta, and I, I remember watching this horse Break her maiden first time out at Saratoga, and that's something that's rare for a Jimmy Toner horse. Did it on the dirt too, and then they immediately thrust her into a stake. So I think they had a high opinion of this uh, this filly, and then her three year old year. I have to think maybe something was was wrong. She ran three times, just never really ran particularly well, and uh, then comes back, lays off from the summer to that allowance win at Keeneland, and she won it very easily. And it was a, a lifetime best buyer fig, and I think okay, okay, if she's as if she's maybe finally getting back to the kind of horse they thought they had when she was a two year old, and so I think I'll get a good price on her. So I'm going to try Recepta in this spot for the win. Use her over Discreet Mark, the seven, the two Radiator, the one J Wonder, and the uh, the six Testarossi as well. If I'm right on Recepta, I want to try to make sure I've got plenty of chances to to hit the exacta here. Let's go to the Grade One Man Awards, the ninth race. Phillies, or this is uh, the boys, four year olds and up, going a mile and three eighths on the turf. Uh, who do you like in here? I'm actually going to go with Twilight Eclipse, the number four. Um, last time out, I think he took the lead a little too early in the Pan American, and Imagining was just able to sit right off of him and power home. Uh, they get a little bit more of a distance on him today. Um, Twilight Eclipse, you know, in his last few races, he's been racing against, you know, main sequence and just can't be beat that horse at all. Um, so I think he gets the break again, gets another little race underneath him. He likes this distance. Um, he's finished okay at Belmont, has, has two seconds and five starts. Um, so I think he's able to able to get it done today i'm gonna to put him imagining underneath of him and then hardest core you know this horse only won the arlington million last year and he was he was highly talked about um very lightly raced horse only 12 starts as a as a five-year-old so he's making his 13th lifetime start likes belmont two wins in a in a second out of three starts so i think this horse needs the race but i think you know with, i don't think that's going to be uh, i think it's gonna be a slower race so i think hardest core holds on for third so for me the number four twilight eclipse with the one and six underneath you mentioned how hot uh, Chad Brown has been at this Belmont meet, and I came awfully close to taking Hyper in here, but just an eight-year-old off of that kind of layoff, I, I couldn't go that uh, that strong. But to come off the layoff in a grade one, uh, if the price floats up, I'll, I'll have a little bit on Hyper, and, and that's one to take a look at. I ended up taking Dynamic Sky. His only race at this distance, a mile and three-eighths, was his best buyer, a 102. And then last time in the Elkhorn at Keeneland, really slow pace. Uh, Dramedy got away with just uh, a cakewalk for most of that race. And Dynamics guy, even with a 116 and change three quarters, came flying and almost won. And I, I think I, I didn't really have anybody I liked a lot in this race, so I wanted a little bit of the price, and I thought I might get a little bit of a price on Dynamics guy. So I'm going to take Dynamics guy. I just think he's in good form, and I uh, think he'll, you know, he'll. He'll make his run, just don't know if he'll get there. I'm going to use him with Twilight Eclipse, with Imagining, and also uh, I'm going to throw in a one exacto with Dynamic Sky and Hyper. Santa Anita has a couple of graded stakes. We'll talk first about the fifth race, which is the grade one Vanity. A small field, so it's carted earlier there at a mile and an eighth for Phillies and Mayors three and up. I ended up taking Beholder. Oh, then, she scratched. Ah, she has scratched. Okay. Yeah. Then I would go Warren's Veneta. Okay. Uh, coming off... Uh, a strong couple of performances. Um, it was between those two. Uh, so 
I just have to give the edge to Warren's Veneta. Not a great betting race here with just the small field and now without Beholder. Um, the uh, the two uh, gas total, I uh, would take a little bit of a look at uh, first time for, I think, for Mandela. So I would take those two in a box, the one and two in the grade one vanity. How about you? Yeah, yeah, very similar. Um, the only the only little bit of difference is my sweet addiction. Very interesting race she ran last time, an option claimer, claimer 62.5. Uh, I think she's going to be part of the pace scenario, so maybe that's the key for her um, holding on today. But Warren's Vanita, I mean, she's been so impressive in her last starts, and I can just see her just blowing the field out like she did last time. Um, so I'm going to use Warren's Vanita with my sweet ad- um, addiction and the number five legacy on, underneath as well. Let's go to the eighth race, the grade three American at uh, a mile on the turf, a three-year-olds and up. Who do you like? I'm going to go. It's such an interesting race, um, but there's so much talk right now. If, if you look on, on Twitter with this Ball a Bali, um, this is the Brazilian Triple Crown winner. Um, he's getting so much hyped. He was aimed for the Breeders' Cup turf back in November, but he came down with a, it sounds like a small little bit of laminitis, and he, he overcame that, and this horse just has been training like a monster at Santa Anita. They, they said, not a millionaire, he looks like a billionaire. Wow. Um, so that's a lot to be said with, you know, Richard Mandela does so well with these South American horses that come up. Um, so it, a lot is going on with this horse right now. He almost broke the world record uh, at a mile um, last year. So that's something to be said. I mean, there's, it's not, he's not just beating up okay horses. He's, he's winning, winning at very good times. Um, Twelve lifetime starts, 11 wins. This horse seems to be pretty legit. Um, so I'm going to use him on top. I'm actually going to single him on, on top. And then I'm going to use the three winning prize, five Talco. Those two finished one, two last time. I'm also going to use the seven home run kitten who really likes this dis- distance and Santa Anita. I'm going to use Bala Bali on top with those three underneath in exactos and tries. Got the same four. I just ended up taking Talco for the win. Um, trouble last time out and he still won. And that was his best buyer. And I like the fact that two of his four lifetime wins have come on the Santa Anita turf course. Um, you know, we certainly have to pay attention to uh, to the eight. Uh, if you follow riders who, who cover the races out in Southern California on Twitter, kind of see what you're hearing, um, see what the price is, uh, how the money's coming early in on Bala Bali. But uh, certainly an intriguing race. i got to use him, home run kit, and winning prize, all with uh, in exacta boxes, with the key being Talco, the five for me, and the grade three American. So that's how we see it for those six weekend stakes races. We're here every Saturday for an edition of the In the Money podcast. And, of course, next weekend we'll probably have two of them, Friday and Saturday, with a big weekend of racing at Pimlico. So make sure you're tuning back in here for the In the Money podcast at keelanselect.com.